Jingming is known as one of the most controversial young writers in China, but he's also one of the most successful, thanks to his slew of die-hard fans. The writer came top of the Writers' Rich List in 2011. He's being referred to as the face of China's new generation of Chinese writers. However, his career has also been murdered by scandal after he was convicted of plagiarism in a case that went to court. Following the public disgrace, he refused to issue a public apology to his fans, which led him to be derided as a typical figure of fickleness and fetishism of his generation. Guo Jingming was born into China's first generation of indulgence. Part of the post 1980s generation, as the country embraced the market economy and the one-child policy was underway, and finally came a generation that had the privilege of chasing their dreams. Despite setbacks, Gore's career seems to be continuing to go from strength to strength. This month will see the first screening of his maiden novel turned film, Tiny Times. The story is based on something he knows a lot about. It's about how young Chinese people are making their ways in the glittering material world. The Tiny Times trilogy, which has been published over the past five years, tells the story of four young girls who live in the same dorm at university. Along the way, the readers get to see how each of the girls struggle to forge careers as well as find love. The kernel of the novel is about growing up. The characters in the story all come from quite different families, so each of them are posed apart in their dispositions. One is rich, another is poor, and one very shy, and the other a little mischievous. We see how they suddenly find themselves in a world of money and materialistic desire. The trilogy has been nicknamed the Brand Handbook. It's also been dubbed as the Chinese version of The Great Gatsby for its focus on luxury and high-end products. I intentionally chose to use detailed descriptions of the extravagant life so that I could touch people on a general level. I do like to spark controversy, but this is actually reality. Other themes I tackle are the compromise and struggle we all face when up against the allure of the dazzling material world. Gore has been hailed as the voice of his generation, but the writer insists that his stories are more like his autobiography. Having grown up in a regular family in southwest China's Sichuan province, Gore admitted he was quite shocked when he first came to Shanghai, which is known as China's economic hub. The cost of living is getting higher and higher. There is no way people in my generation can live a good life simply by depending on our parents. I majored in art at university, and the first thing my teachers said to me was to buy a high-end TV or good camera. I guess this isn't such a big deal for families in Shanghai, but for me at that time, it was tantamount to buying a car. The style of life in this metropolitan frightened me. Guo credits his life experiences as the inspiration behind becoming a writer. He went on to win the new concept writing competitions in 2001 and 2002, and then later scooped a publishing deal. This way of life is so new to all of us in my generation. Our parents never had to deal with this style of living. Their lives were so much simpler. They never had to deal with issues such as the corruption of wealth. But my generation, the post 1980s generation, have been subjected to the allure of wealth and luxury during our formative years. Guo is one of the few young writers in China who uses writing to reflect upon the strengths and weaknesses of China's youth. In recent years, China's young have been branded materialist and money worshippers. One of the latest headlines to spark heated discussion was an article published by China's ruling party's mouthpiece newspaper, claiming that China's post-80s generation lack ambition and enthusiasm. Rather than wanting to blaze a new trail for the country, they've simply sat back and lapped up their lives of consumerism and prosperity. In Guo's eyes, these are not groundbreaking times. A material desire is a natural process. Famous brands represent quality of life. These brands have high quality and history, so even I enjoy buying these products if I can afford them. I have had to adjust myself and learn to play by new rules. If you play by the rules, you can enjoy the wealth the rules bring you. During the interview, Guo did not touch on the disparity between serious literary work and commercial themes marketed purely for popularity, nor did he mention the charge of plagiarism that may have helped boost his reputation as well as his income. 
In a court case that lasted three years, Guo's second novel, Lost in the Dream, was confirmed as a partial copy of the work of a Beijing female writer. Guo shook off the aftermath of the scandal by looking ahead. In his later works, he's said to explore the motivations behind his actions, which some say could again be done to the arrogance of his generation. When it comes to his new film, Guo says he explores the antidote to the perplexity and loneliness of a child raised without any brothers or sisters. In the film, four girls find their way through life and are supported by their deep friendships. Unlike his early student days, Guo no longer has to worry about money. He's reported to have earned more than $15 million over the past five years. He now runs a publishing company that helps young writers fulfill their own literary dreams. Guo calls himself a rule breaker. He's already acknowledged that the film may bring him more controversy since he's not a professional director. Guo is now setting his sights on being more creative with his set design and perhaps even shooting a sci-fi film. I'm looking forward to trying new and different things in the future. New things can enrich my life and make my life full.